Hey, Banner, if you were on the brink of death, would you sacrifice your own life and give me the only antidote that could heal you, just like Colson did for Daisy? Jeff, if giving you a tissue would save your life and I had to sneeze, I would be wiping my nose. That's beautiful. You should write children's books. into the Bro for Squad podcast. This is our review of the season five finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. entitled The End. I'm your host, Jeff Hornacek. With me, as always, is the mad scientist, Brian Banner, to grade this as we do all of our TV shows on our four Bro for Squad criteria, the acting, the story, our favorite scene, and any theories going forward. Brian, season five in the books of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we now know we are getting an abbreviated season six. What would you think of the sort of last hurrah for this season that the cast gave us? Overall, very solid effort. I, I'm i not going to admit that there was one individual that was really good. That I'm, not, I'm just not going to admit it. Um, but I actually thought that the actress that plays Gemma, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. She, Elizabeth Henstridge, she was awesome. You. She absolutely killed it. She did a great job. Um, and, and she, again, kind of like DeCastro, just continues to improve and continues to impress me every time we see her um, and continues to up the game. And s- that bar is set so high, and she keeps pushing it even higher. So I thought that she was kind of a standout in this one um, alongside somebody else, but I'm not going to say who it is. Yeah, the person you're refusing to mention is Henry Simmons. Is I'm Mac so mad the, he's not dead. And the only thing stronger than his biceps, which somehow keep getting bigger every episode, are his Stupid. acting chops. He was awesome, and I'm glad that he is basically now the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. because he deserves it. Um, he yeah, so the bad. only low light I had for this one, I don't really want to harp on it, was Natalie Cordova Buckley as Yo-Yo. Um, it's been kind of a rough season for her. I think she got a little overexposed with what they asked her character to do. But for the most part, there were some really high highs in terms of acting this season, and this episode ended with... Clark Gregg, Agent Phil Coulson, the bell cow of the show, who just absolutely brought it and crushed. I mean, he had some really, really poignant scenes in this episode, some of the most powerful stuff that the show's ever done, and absolutely destroyed it and knocked it out of the park. I think part of it, and Brian, you and I talked about this off pod, is that Clark Gregg feels such a love for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and this character that it's like, I believe he's actually getting emotional on screen. Like, Fuck. There's I, no way he's like, actually acting at certain times. He's just actually feeling that way. Like he knows that it's coming to an end and he doesn't know how to react. Or, but he does know how to act. And that moves us on to the second part, which is the story. So the way that this season ended obviously was the uh, confrontation with Talbot, defeat him at all costs. Colson, as always being a team player giving up uh, the centipede serum, giving it to Daisy. And I think the only thing that I really want to highlight on before I toss it over to you was the CGI in this episode was unbelievable. Like Absolutely out of this park. I have seen big budget movies, like looking at you, Power Rangers, with worse CGI than this, this episode had for the show. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree. There was The only exception was at the end when – uh, Colson was at Tahiti and him and May are like holding hands. That was really bad green screen. But other than that, everything in Chicago with the uh, Gravitonium was just absolutely unreal. And you, you could honestly put that in a movie and I'd be like, oh, I'll buy it. Like, that's perfect. Um, yeah, this was not like the dollar brand action set piece. Like no, they not put their all. money where their mouth was. No, not at all. This isn't this isn't something off the sci fi channel. Um, like like megalodon shark versus like T Rex or something that's on <laughs> Spike TV, and then they can play it off like, oh, we were trying to make that shitty. Like, yeah, no, you weren't. Yeah, it's not Sharknado, guys. Um, it, as far as the story goes, this episode really did a really good job of of closing everything up, kind of tying up all the loose ends. Um, we got a, a big death, which I don't agree with. Okay. Save it Did for we, theories because we're going to have, we're going to have a long discussion in theories. Uh, Trent Pimp, we need your comments on the theories. They did, they did a good there. job of summing everything up. 
I have a very big problem with the last four minutes of the ep- episode, uh, but I think that that's best saved for, for another section of the show. Overall, though, really, really good job of bringing the team all back together. Because really, even at the beginning of this episode, the team is still fractured. And I wasn't sure that they were going get, to get their shit together. And they did a good job of making us believe that they did, did get their shit together and they all made the, the decisions that we would typically think that an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. would make. And that was cool. Yeah, when they were backed into a corner the most this episode, uh, they basically realized that the rifts that they're having, while they are significant, like they're really not going to matter if the world ends. So we might as well um, put our differences aside for at least a little bit, even though some of those differences are some of us trying to kill others of us. But we can't hold grudges forever. It's fine. Gosh. All right. Best scene. What do you got? Um, Honestly, I'm probably going to go with the fight scene between Daisy and Talbot. The CGI was incredible. The emotion on their faces was incredible. The the uh, choreography was great. Um, really, really good job with that fight scene. And and the, their use of wires, I thought, was really, really cool. Just being, you know, floating in the air and having kind of the fights in the uh, in the sky and stuff. Really good, especially for a, for a television show that. Um, they didn't. They didn't pull any punches. They 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 definitely emptied the piggy bank here. They're, they don't. They're not saving anything for next season. That scene was incredible. I uh, was also thinking too. Basically, the scene where Daisy. I guess it was like the in the middle of the fight, but when she had the little uh, speech with um, Talbot briefly, and and I actually thought that she was going to be able to just reason with him. That was a really well written scene too. Yeah, and it was really um, cool too because you have. Like you over the course of the show, if you think about it, you have Colson teaching her those skills ever so slightly, and then it, it's all coming to to a head, just like Colson said in the show. I've given you all the skills that you need, and she was able to actually utilize all those, which is really is a powerful scene. It was cool. Yeah, when Talbot said, "I need to be a hero," and she said, "You already are. You were the day you enlisted." I was like, "Damn, that's awesome." Um, the, the best scene for me was this celebration of Coulson's scene that is kind of under the guise of being a Fitz funeral for the first five minutes. And we're going to get into that here in just a second I'm in theories because so I still don't know what the fuck so was sad. going on with that. But regardless, um, I'm going to assume that this is the last hurrah for Clark Gregg on the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Obviously, we'll get him in Captain Marvel next year. But I felt it. It felt, like we were saying a little bit earlier, it felt almost too real in terms of their emotion to where I feel like the actors themselves were actually saying goodbye to Clark Gregg. And that in and of itself, I was on the, the verge of tears. Maybe I cried a little bit. I don't know. Um, don't, lie it, to, don't lie to the folks. It did its job. Let's just say that. It did its job. All right. On to theories. And as always, Trend Pimp, we need you to help us out here because... Brian and I don't know what the hell happened, but if it's what we think, then we're pretty upset. So, Brian, why don't you go and I'll jump in and we'll just get either upset or happy or speculate together here. I have been saying this entire season with the rumors that will they, won't they get a sixth season, that we're going to get a sixth season, but none of us are going to want it. And we're going to look back at that last sixth season two, three, four years later, even even right after it's done or as it's being aired, and going, what the fuck is this? They should have ended it at the end of season five. And just with the last four minutes of this episode, that's exactly what we're going to get. So you have this great job you're going to give to Caster, who grew so much in the, the show um, as an actor. His swan song and his, his goodbye, you know, you die being the hero and, and everything. And then... Is he dead? Is he not dead? Well, yeah, let me jump in. I'm so fucking I, confused. So they claim there's a Fitz out in space who wrote them the postcard, but I thought we already had established that the Fitz who wrote that was the same one who stashed weapons uh, in in the freighter and was uh, Korath or whatever. Not Korath, the pursuer from Guardians, but Korvac, was that the guy's name? The dude who we really liked? Helped him basically freeze himself. Oh, Enoch? Cryogenic. Enoch, thank you. Yeah, you were close with, with Korvac. Yeah, one off. Uh, so I don't understand how there's another Fitz out there is another thing I don't get. Also, another thing I need to ask, where does this fit in with the timeline at the end of Infinity War? Because Trend Pip speculated this before, based on when the next season starts up, which is about this time next year, so not earlier in the fall like it did previously, are they just going to come back and say, oh, by the way, half of us disappeared and came back? Because to me, for the biggest event in the MCU ever, and them clearly having referenced Thanos that's pretty cheap. That's a fucking cop out to me. Yeah, and I mean, I've 
we've talked about this, and I love playing devil's advocate, and I don't even agree with what I'm about to say now, but when did the, the events in New York happen? Because they, they clearly reference that and reference that Thanos is coming versus the events that happen in Infinity War in Wakanda or, or the events that happen on Titan. Are, is that days, weeks, months later after? Like, how long are Doctor Strange, Iron Man, and Peter Parker missing from Earth? And yeah, because it feels like hours. It feels movies, like hours, but, but are we supposed to say that it's days? Are we supposed to think that it's weeks, months? I, I mean, what? How long is that? And is that what we're supposed to try and figure out for Agents of Shield to fit into that time frame? Because we know that the guess, attack on New York already happened. Right. I guess aside from all that, the main thing pertinent to this show in terms of theories is, and again, Trend Pimp, I want your opinion on this, but Brian, do you think Coulson will be back next season in non-flashback format? I do. I honestly do. And it really upsets me. I do as well, and I'm not, I'm not sure if it upsets me yet. It depends how they do it. I love this show. I love Clark Gregg and Phil Coulson, but I think part of the reason why I love it is I feel like we got a great closure and an end to his character through line. I thought it was the, one of the it's coolest finale. things to have him just walk out on his own uh, in, in Tahiti. Like, hey, it's a bucket list thing. I thought I went to Tahiti all those years ago, even though I was in some fucking bunker being juiced up with alien steroids. And Sounds like spring break 03, am I right? It was awesome. Those, those were the days. Um, so, yeah, I, I, again, I, I agree. I don't want him to come back, but I can also see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And you said it best. It took them four seasons to finally get rid of Grant Ward. So why, why, what's going to stop them from all of a sudden having the Quinjet stop on a beach while May and Phil are having a pina colada and going, Phil, we know how to save you. Drink this. And then it's he's a, back, and but he's it's fine. actually, but it's actually Smirnoff Ice. They ice him, and that's the plot twist. And then he just dies from the sugar that he drank. That would it be always incredible. gives me heartburn too. Either way, I love the show. I'm glad it's coming back, but I, I think I'm just worried that some of these things in um, pop culture and specifically comic books just live on a little bit past when they should, and then they we end up seeing a not as good version of them, which is what I'm a little bit afraid of. You know what you're really afraid of is that. Deke is actually gone and he's off the show. No. No, you want him back really is bad. Is Deke, if this were an SAT analogy, is Deke to Hornacek as Mac is to Banner? Is that basically. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Look, I'll admit it if you agree. And on that note, we will conclude our review of Season 5, Episode 22, the finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. For the mad scientist, Brian Banner, I'm the mayor, Jeff Hornacek. Thank you guys for checking us out. Make us your home for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., MCU movies, all sorts of movie talk. And subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube and Spotify, actually. bro 4 squad three words. Give us a follow on Twitter, at bro 4 squad and check out everything that we do on our website, bro 4 squadcom Thanks, guys. We'll catch you next time. Deke is just too... He sucks. But you love him. I know. Or something to that effect. Do you just rip ass? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounded like two pieces of wood being like, <laughs> or like if you take like a drumstick and run up the stairs, you know, and like, grrr. yep. <laughs> Except it was my butt and it was air coming out of it. <laughs>